Today on One Day Leader, we look back at the Fees Must Fall campaign and test whether or not, realistically, there's a possibility for government to provide free education in high learning institutions. Hello South Africa and welcome to this week's One Day Leader episode. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jumelo Motodwane. Well, South Africa has the fifth highest per capita income in Africa. And although poverty and inequality remain widespread, with about a quarter of the population being unemployed and living on less than 1.25 US dollars a day. Now fees at any of the 26 regular universities in South Africa cost an average of 30 thousand rands for an ordinary Bachelor of Arts degree annually. Now the amount of course excludes accommodation, food and transport. At the rate of the current increase, if your child is eight years old today, you can expect to pay more than 350,000 rands for four years of education at any of the universities in South Africa after he or she turns 18 in 2024. Now, just last year, students from various tertiary institutions came together and initiated what was called the hashtag Fees Must Fall campaign, where they of course questioned the annual increase and demanded that government provide a free education for all students in tertiary institutions. Today, we're discussing a topic that we've labelled access to free education in high learning institutions and request that you of course like our Facebook page and share your views with us on this topic on One Day Leader SA and our Twitter account is at One Day Leader and you can hashtag One Day Leader. Now we start off this week with the vision statements from each of our candidates and of course we start this one with leader number one. His name is Zarif Minty. I envision a country where every young person has the ability to network, self-brand and commercialize themselves already at high school level. I envision a country where we fight unemployment through entrepreneurship, where we make sure young people become job seekers, I mean job creators. Instead of Thank you so much, leader number one. We're going to move on now to our second leader. Her name is Natasha Sissi. I envision a South Africa that is the breeding ground for innovative solutions for every course. My vision for South Africa entails seeing innovative enterprise development and education as core poverty reduction strategies. I Thank you so much, leader number two. We move on now to leader number three, and his name is Tami Poe. I envision a South African economy that is proportionate to the majority of the country. It starts with taking back our market and inculcating a culture of black entrepreneurship and black consumerism, black money. Thank you so much, leader number three. Let's move on now to our next lady, leader number four, and her name is Nandile Mlambo. I am passionate about nation building and I envision a South Africa where young people are pioneers and literally carve their own paths and carve their own niche when it comes to creating um, career opportunities. Thank you so much, leader number four. Let's move on now to leader number five, and his name is Sydney Madibo. Leader number five with five principles. One, development. Two, equality, democracy, transformation, redress, and a collective attitude towards developing South Africa. Now, these are the five principles that I use, and I envision South Africa to be exactly just that. Thank you so much, leader number five. Last, but definitely not least, is leader number six, and her name is Ludwigazi Ndlaz. A South Africa that is not limited by jurisdiction, a country where upon idea generation and strategic planning, horizons are broadened. In a land alive with possibilities, South Africa, see innovation. Think global, act local. Thank you so much. Those are our top six leaders. We thank you so much for those vision statements. And now, before we start off with this week's episode, let's take a look at our scoreboard for this week. Zarif has the most votes and he gets two points. Natasha comes second with one point. Well, to make sure that your favorite leader is in the top spot, please vote for them on our SMS line, which is 33121. And this is how you get to vote. To vote for your favorite leader, vote leader one, Zarif Minty. Leader two, Natasha Sasing. Leader three, Tommy Boy. Leader 4, Nandi Lamlambo. Leader 5, Sydney Madibo. And Leader 6, Ludwigazi Ndlazi. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, One Day Leader would not be complete without our judges. Let's take a look at the judges' profiles. 
Dabogodi Tseho is the CEO of the Tseho Investment Group and the Tseho Media. He is also the founder of Read a Book Essay. Catherine Constantinidis is the Executive Director of Miss Earth South Africa. She is also the co-founder of Generation Earth. Well, of course, those were our judges, and I uh, would like to just welcome back Debo Khodisar, of course, our resident judge. Um, we had a very exciting episode two. What do you anticipate for episode three? Well, I think the contestants are going to do their research, um, get enough information um, in order for them to come up with a plan. And the plan needs to be feasible, and you need to think about the implications of your plan. So that is exactly what I'm looking for in this uh, particular show. Thank you so much, Debo Hop. Well, I guess judge for today is Dr. Diane Parker, who's the Deputy Director General for University Education in the Department of Higher Education and Training. Now, before that, she was the Chief Director in Teaching and Learning Development in the University Education Branch of that department. And she has a PhD in the Faculty of Science from this university. Dr. Parker, thank you so much for your time this evening. What exactly does your particular department deal with? My department, I'm, I'm responsible for university education in general and we provide uh, policy support and regulation for the university education system, mm -hmm. including universities, private higher education institutions, the Council on Higher Education, NISFAS, as well as the National Institutes for Humanities and Social Sciences. Oh, so I reckon you are the best person to talk to, um, should of course these leaders want to initiate free education in the country. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Now of course Catherine has requested a familiar face on One Day Leader by the name of Sebenzi Lengambule to stand in for her today as she is travelling. Now Sebenzi was a contestant on One Day Leader Season 1 and is a familiar voice at a popular radio station. Well, she aspires to use the media to restore the dignity of Africans and to tell African stories. Sebenzile, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to One Day Leader. Not um, such an unfamiliar space, I suppose, and I understand you understand what they're going through at this moment. But tell us, how do you envision on telling African stories, especially in such a global village that we live in today? Yeah, absolutely. It's good to be back here, just on, on this side of the table, though, so I know exactly what these guys <laughs> are feeling. Sydney, that's a special number, brother, so represented well. Um, I think it's important, and, and what we saw last year, that we, we need to probe and, and ask, are we talking and calling for free education or accessible education right. for the sake of education, or do we actually have a plan here? Because if we actually followed what the gaps are in this country, less people would be aspiring to go to institutions of higher education. Perhaps they would go to uh, former FET, now right. TVET colleges, right? We talk about the needs in terms of um, artisans. And particularly for me, in terms of the process of restoring African dignity, education is critical, but we must ask what are we being taught in our schools? How much of ourselves mm. are in right, the, the, the coursework that we are seeing? And how much of that is in fact useful for the kind of society we want to create for ourselves? And I think, and I'm hoping that that's what the contestants will also yeah. be, be bring about in the debate. Well, thank you so much, Seven Z. The very key points that she's made there that I think you should also bear in mind as you argue your points today. Now, today we are talking about access to education to students who are at tertiary institutions. There was a plea by university students to have free education and our candidates met with up to three students who took part in the campaign last year. Let's see what exactly they got up to. The judges asked me to introduce the concept of free education and its reality to our contestants as they deal with the fees must fall concept issue that our young people in our country are dealing with. Good morning, leaders. Your task for today will be to investigate the Fees Must Fall campaign. You will meet Ndando from Katlehong and Palisa from Tswane. You will then have to talk to both students and find out why they personally participated in the Fees Must Fall campaign that took place in the country. You will then have to do your research, leaders, as to how government can implement cheaper, or free education for all young South Africans. You will then present your research and your suggestions to the Council of Higher Education. Now, the Council of Higher Education is an institution that works with higher institutions to regulate fees in the country. And your leader is. 
Natasha, you will lead this team. I, I feel really nervous. But I'm really excited and really prepared for a challenge here today. Kiyakana gore task ya teng is really relevant. Gore the student is in cities hamikile karolo mo fees must fall towards um, examinations. For the students who started school after the new democracy in 1994, who received free education in the past, the concept of being expected to pay is a foreign concept. So they took this to the streets to turn the situation around. The contestants divided themselves up for this task. Zarif Minty was assigned task leader for this one. Why were you personally involved in the Fees Must Fall campaign? If the, the, um, the fees were to increase, then my, my grandmother would struggle, you know, because she, she's not only paying for my fees, but looking after my other cousins as well. The institution here, okay, TUT, has always been identified as one of that's violent. So for them to go on strike, it was a cry for help. It wasn't, they weren't just doing it for the sake of going on strike. Bafunu manyelo, bafunu viwa, and it's exactly that we want to address the fact that we don't necessarily have to, to, to destroy the school property, you know. It can just be peaceful, put our voices out there. Would you think fees can actually fall completely? Is that something you believe in? It doesn't necessarily have to be free, yes. but it should be affordable for everyone. For me, I was very satisfied. No yana remo um Pretoria East, Ridlobuali Ulo from Vits University. He one of the people Baba conceptualizing or but Baba Tamkiling Karlo E Tunatota Moho start up paying this fees must fall campaign. As a founding member, right, as an integral like role player or stakeholder in the movement, can you define fees must fall? The conception of fees must fall, what is it? What does it mean to you, if you can say it in words? I think what, what Fees Must Fall symbolises is the eager demand and want of young people to have access to education. That's really what it is about. Yes, Fees Must Fall came about around a discussion or disgruntlement or grievance around the proposed increments of fees at various institutions of higher learning nationally, but what it really symbolises is the want for free education. Hence, the demand became very clear that we do want the 0% now as an interim um, 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 demand or an immediate demand, but really what we want as students is a commitment from the state and from various stakeholders of society on the on the call for free education. Mm. And we're not asking for a task team, we're not asking for an in-principled agreement. Who determines the narrative of fees must fall to the people? The students. Those of us who are on the ground, those of us who woke up at 6 a.m. every morning from the 14th of October, ensuring that campus became shut down in the first place. Siekatle Hong, Sobes Noy, in an interview, Nogando, Naya, also Sniggers and Imniningwane, Etile. In your opinion, how do you feel about free education? How do you think it can be achieved on the general? I'm not one that supports like free education as a whole. We can't put it on the government's own. You know, we, we plan a lot on funerals. Yeah. You know, why can't they show us adverts on how we can plan on our education? Are you able to pay your fees, or do you get uh, government support? What what what's the situation? Can you enlighten us on that? The the situation right now is that um, my parents can't afford to pay my fees, so I'm in that bucket. Mm. So he, my parents can't afford, mm -hmm. and I also can't afford the the government um, subsidies as well. <laughs> It's not just varsity alone. There's, there's, there's a lot of colleges. Learnerships, internships. Internships, FETs, but the, the only thing, like when we, we feel like in order to succeed, you need to go to varsity. Mm -hmm. But there's FET colleges, there's, there's everything. Yeah. The things are there, it's just people don't know about mm -hmm. them.
Firstly, you know, speaking to Nkosi from the University of Johannesburg was really cool. Um, you know, sometimes leaders, I mean, he's a thought leader without a doubt, but, you know, he just never had the platform to speak up before. It's really nice getting a chance to engage with him, and I've learned so much. I think, you know, just sitting down and listening to him speak, now that is certainly some interesting information that came up from the contestants and their case studies. And for the next part of the task, of course the contestants were requested to prepare a presentation for the Council on Higher Education. What kind of ideas did they come up with? Well we find out straight after this. Welcome back to One Day Leader. My name is Tumelo Mututwani and I'd like to remind you that our voting lines are officially opened. So please vote for your favorite leader on double three one two one. Now before the break, our candidates spoke to some students who were involved in the Fees Must Fall campaign. And now they're devising plans that they will be presenting to the Council on Higher Education. Let's see what they got up to. It's day two and our team is ready to present their ideas to the Council on Higher Education. So from um, the different case studies when we're introducing the whole presentation, what we could do is change the chronological order uh, so that we move from um, the UJ student to the TUT student and then, and then to the SRC president. Uh, and then that's when we'll then move on to the rest of the presentation. That's mm -hmm. perfect. So you're just going to have to swap the things around, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Timmy is very prepared. Um, Kibereka leba tu baba ikemi si itseng kubereka, and um, there's good communication. And I feel like today's presentation can is really going to be a really good one, based on people's um personal insight, research, and efforts. I know Sireti Gakulu, um, we manje, um, song and jay as a baholi, snama corner et a shugile, snimbonus a shugile got and jay, Sissi Shang and Nisa actually presentation here to Ogut in the best gain a lapana, a Sishan Tonga Sugum pants. Rico Council of Higher Education, the Lemona got to present the suggestions of Nata free education and how to achieve free education. So one of them, I'm feeling confident towards the bank. It's a really presentation of what I'm going to do. So you're not too anti It's going to be an awesome presentation. What we're discussing today is access to higher education and whether or not it should be free or affordable. The one thing that we're going to be looking at, Prof, is the linkage between the 1976 Sharpeville Youth Uprising and we're going to link that up on how it is. it can be compared to the 2015 Fees Must Fall campaign. Although both these protests are different with regards to the needs that the students then have, they are alike in a sense that young South Africans took it upon themselves to change piercing realities that directly affected them. Because of the fact that uh, disciplined protests are not getting the effect that it actually deserves, um, you know, a lot of them then go further into violence um, and damage to property and a whole lot of concepts like this. So I feel that the only way we're going to solve that is through um, in innovative management at university level. So to make sure that every single university structure has management that is innovative and listens to their students. Also very important that we have leadership that um, actually portrays what is demanded by students. Mna, <laughs> I had drama. Five minutes before our presentation, it had been a and even a presentation yam yonke. According to the report of the Working Group of the Free University Education for the Poor in South Africa, 72% of students on NSFAS drop out. Immediately, that raises the question of what happens to that to the funds that were allocated to that 72%. I had to use Umsebenzibenkaten scribble shago, so I had to scribble, look into that scribbled work, and there was no time to start over and write. The, the answer to that is that it's bad debts. Are these funds recoverable? Can these funds be recovered? NSFAS has a bracket where there's certain students who cannot be able to qualify for funding. The 120,000 rands per household income is that barrier. Right, so how do we find a solution to that? We have constructed a model 
where we look at transformation in higher education, and that can only be achieved through access to higher education. We also then uh, further looked at addressing disparities in post-democratic, um, post-apartheid South Africa. We've aggregated all of the problems that we see today from the FISMAS for protest and also the problems that we see with the higher education funding through NASFIS. We have 800,000 students at an undergrad level, right? And it has been calculated that in order to fund these people for free, 71, million, 71 billion rand is actually needed in this regard. So the question then is, where do we get this money? And here's our model. So it's an amalgamation between corporate tax and the reallocation of state funds currently. And this is really a model that we actually took and we actually uh, borrowed from countries that have applied something similar, like Chile, etc. right? Uh, the corporate tax revenue, as we speak in status quo, is 28%. And at 28%, it is 179 billion rands per annum. So we believe that at a 5% increase, this gives us 31 billion rands towards free education or towards the allocation of funds for higher education. So that, that, that's us getting a lump sum from the corporate sector in order to get us towards free education or towards funding this free education. Take it away, Mrs. Um, the vision here is equipping people with the opportunity because not everybody is going to go into a traditional university. The next solution needs to be, we need training centers where it's in arm's reach, where if you leave school, I can get a, a, a practical qualification that can still make me relevant. And most of the time, this is in, within the artisan um, field, which is a, a high school sort shortage in our country. Well, thank you very much. I must start off by saying how impressed I am with the depth of your thinking and your reasoning. I have to say I was very impressed with the slickness of the presentations and the confidence that they all showed, without exception. Uh, I think they've re researched the material very well. They've clearly, uh, in the interviews, uh, asked the right questions. Um, so I'll give them full marks for presentation, uh, but I'll give them perhaps uh, six or seven out of 10 in terms of the research. Yeah. I believe for Timmy, it did really well. Uh, in a sense that re research le khulukhuns ka ka topic ya fandag and le professor le ne toto bular ba ga ishbon mer kwa nyin hela yana Welcome back to One Day Leader. Now, we of course saw before the outbreak the presentation that our candidates had prepared for the Council on Higher Education with suggestions on how the government can reduce the fees or offer free education. So, wow, great work, guys. Congratulations. I mean, I think some of your suggestions were very key and they might just be taken into consideration. But let me take it back to our judges, Anasenda and you have a question. Yes, thank you very much. Tommy, I was very interested in your um, description of the Chilean model and the idea of a 5% corporate tax to help fund um, free higher education. But could I ask you, do you think that that would be sufficient? And secondly, what would the economic consequences of that be in terms of the corporate sector and business sector and their view of such a huge increase in tax? Okay. So first of all, we have a thriving um, private sector. We probably have the most thriving private sector in Africa. So it wouldn't be like too much of a knock or too much of a burden on the, that particular private sector, right? But I think the knock-on effect obviously will, will be the fact that, look, uh, there will be a bit of resistance from the corporates, but they won't go anywhere precisely because they still need to invest in this country because we have a huge consumer market for the private sector anyway. So it's a better um, incentive for, 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 for government to actually charge the corporates right. because, you know, it makes so much sense for them. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you so much. Seven Zila, your question? My question is uh, directed to, to you, Natasha, particularly during your, your, your presentation, but research was critical um, as well. And I, and I think as a team, you are rated up 60% uh, for that as well. But, uh, but you, you mixed up two critical events in, in our history, the, the, the Sharpeville massacre as well as Zola 76. And I believe you were referring to 76 in particular. And, and, those, and those students, uh, they, they, they essentially changed the course of, of students for all of us really post that particular 
particular period, they had a common cause. Do you believe that uh, the students of, of 2015 and, and beyond have a common cause in terms of what they want for, for themselves in terms of education, not just access, but what they are actually being taught? Um, I strongly believe that um, the, the, the students of 2015 had a common cause and we saw that with the Fees Must Fall campaign when students from different institutions of different races, colours, you know, and different backgrounds came together and said, listen, it is about time that fees fall right. within the South African context. Thank you so much. Leader number two. Tebo, for your question. Yeah, my question is for Ludwe Gazi. Um, you did a comparative analysis with other countries which implemented free education. And I wanted to find out what are some of the challenges you encountered and how can you um, resolve those challenges? Okay, uh, with those challenges, we have to look at what resources do we have in South Africa. We needed to look at what is it that we, we have currently and what it is that we can require realistically. So that's how we came up with the two comparisons, at the same time looking at a goal that will be realistic and will be able to come into life. Thank you so much, Season number six. Judges, thank you so much for your questions. And now we go straight into our debate section. The question we're asking this week is, can South Africa afford to offer free quality higher education and higher learning institutions? As some people say, when you make things free, they lose their quality. Is this true? Now, this is up to our candidates to answer. But before we get into our debates for this week, here are the rules for our debate. Every leader has a set of instructions and disciplines to live by. These are the rules for the one-day leader debates. You have 30 seconds to state your vision statement, 60 seconds for the opponent to challenge, and 30 seconds to conclude your debate. And with that said, we start our very first debate, which is between leader number six, Ludwig Azi, and leader one, Zarif. And we'll start this one with the lady. Your 30 seconds begin now. A system that caters for both the privileged and underprivileged offers alternatives to all learner types, the autonomous, the auditory, the visual, it encourages independence among students, improves the quality of education, and capitalizes on technological advancement. What is this, South Africa? A global solution to our local problem, virtual education. How? We increase our bandwidth, software and hardware, and we acquire this through government funding and re-channel funds from traditional education to electronic ed education. Leader One Debate. Um, you're speaking a lot about, you know, what you want to achieve, but obviously bandwidth. What do you mean by bandwidth? By bandwidth, I mean the rate of data transfer. It means that we need to increase the, the resource, our resource, which is internet connection in South Africa. But that do, you is think, how do you think that's the solution to reaching free education? It I is mean, a solution because it is, a, it is a source, it is a tool that we will use to require to be able to implement virtual education, electronic learning, who's gonna, mobile who's gonna learning. Fund, who's going to fund this um, the same funding that went through traditional systems of education will go into electronic learning. Such universal who's going to fund? Who's going to fund? The it? government funds it. The government's going to government fund it. From what budget exactly? From where? The, where's the money going to be coming? The original from? allocation, the, each and every financial year, the, the budget, the, the the government allocates funds. But you need for, to give us a budget amount. You need to say where it's coming from for us to understand. It's coming it. from the very same allocation that has been used for a number of years in in our education system. The government has been funding for traditional education system. We are just turning those funds taking them into electronic rap leader six free education in south africa is realistic and can be realized if selman khan of khan academy was able to transform education so why can't we do the same if the department of education in south africa was able to drive the tutong edu tutong educational portal and the department of basic education together with brand houses the Ukufunda Virtual School. Why can't we apply the same principle in our institutions of higher learning? This future reality would be a realistic approach. And South Africa, this is how every student would be... Thank you so much, Leader 6. All right, Leader 1, your 30 seconds to state your vision statement. Begin now. South Africa can afford a free quality tertiary education. In fact, it will cost us 96 billion rand every single financial year to cover tertiary education. Now, you minus the subsidy already provided by the government, which is 25 billion which then leaves you with a shortfall of 71 billion. The 71 billion can be met by, by, by reducing state um, wage bill by 5% and then cutting subsidies on peristatals, especially failed peristatals, and cutting fund expenditure by 25% as well. Debate Leader 6. Um, I want to know how will this um, improve the ranking of South Africa in terms of the educational system. In 2011, we were at 
Uh, 140 out of 144 countries. How will your okay? Firstly, by, by providing by providing free education, we'll be allowing more of our young people to be able to have the opportunity to How go and educate the themselves. Of the Therefore, education? the level of our economy is going to become more competitive because. The great Tabo Mbeki and his brother as well stated that for us to have a competitive economy, we have to educate as many people How as possible. How will the quality of education by having be a improved? More, by having a more competitive economy, it will then lead to a better a better. I land. understand that you yes. speak of the economy. How will the quality of education our, improve? Our quality of, our quality of education is still going to continually rise because the United, your university fees will always stay the same. The, fees? the university fees should never ever go down or should be limited because the university needs to have quality, it needs to, imp it needs to improve its infrastructure and therefore uh, what I'm saying is the state needs to cover your funding for this. And I therefore understand the funding leader, the what I'm yes. asking is how... Rep leader one, Keisha. Okay. Um, in closing, all I'm saying is for us to reduce unemployment and create new industries in South Africa, we have to create a competitive economy and that's by allowing to educate as many people as possible in South Africa. Therefore the state needs to consider this formula, especially in a country where the households are South African households, only 5% of them can actually send two of their children to university. What I'm saying is we need to make sure that state intervention is occurred without ever putting any pressure on individuals or companies in that, in that particular state. Thank you so much. A round of applause to Leader 1 and Leader 6. All right, judges, this is your turn now to vote. I'll give you a few seconds to vote. Which leader you think took this particular debate? Is it Leader 1, Zarif, or Leader 6, Ludwe Gazi? All right, seems like we have concluded a voting with the judges and let's take a look at who took that vote. All right, for the second time in a row, leader number six, Rura Gazi, took that round. A round of applause. Congratulations, Rura Gazi, for winning your very second, of course, debate, second time in a row. But we continue with two more debates only after this break. Welcome back. You're watching One Day Leader right here on SABC One. And today's debate topic is, can South Africa afford to offer free quality higher education at high learning institutions? Now, our next debate is between leader number two, Natasha, and leader number five, Sydney. And this one will start with the gentleman. So, Sydney, your 30 seconds begin now. If ever we are to enter into the debate on the transformation trajectory of public higher education institutions, we need to focus it on access and redress. And narrowly, this should lead us to advocating for the funding of education of previously disadvantaged peoples. Now, this should draw us to the narrative that this is a group of people that were denied access and success in institutions of higher learning previously. Now, they sit now as individuals who are parents to children that they cannot afford their higher education because these are parents. Back debate leader two. Um, what I want to ask, I heard you talking about redressing and advocating only for the disadvantaged few. What I want to ask is how are you going to identify those disadvantaged few? Because what we sit with is that NSFAS allocates um, money already and you find that there, there's that middle gap of um, yes. middle um, class um, um, families that are said to be affording tertiary institutions exactly. while only 5% of South Africans can comfortably afford it. So do you mean that 95% of South Africans will be getting this free education? And please mention how they'll be getting it. What I'm saying to you is quite simple. How do we go about identifying, I think that is the scope of your question, how do we go about identifying those who fall under that scope, that, 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 that previously disadvantaged scopes? Now in universities across South Africa, and I believe in colleges as well, we have what we call broad transformation forums or institutional forums within universities. Now institutional forums within universities are set you up... You might as well wrap leader five. Strictly, uh, okay. I envision a South Africa in which we all participate in the transformation process. The development of one South African is inextricably linked to another. Deriving funds directly from the GDP is affirmation that every single cent spent, every tax paid, every corporation built, and every ordinary South African contributing to the income of the country contributes the, uh, to the education of their young and their skills development. If ever you are to speak about serious development of this country, then we need to fund. Thank free you, Leader Five. Leader Two, your 30 seconds to state your vision statement begins now. Okay. 
According to a study conducted by the South African Institute of Race Relations, only 5% of families can comfortably pay the university fees of their children. Free quality education is possible through innovative solutions, the united efforts of the state, private sector and citizens of the country. Alrighty then. Thank you so much. You're done. On the spot, you may now get into your debate, Leader Five. Higher education in the South African context should be set out according to the provisions that are made by the Freedom Charter as adopted by the Congress of the People in Cape Town 1955. In a transformative context and in an attempt to bridge in the gap between the upper class and the lower and middle working class, Where public we higher education, we wait for it, it is coming education. your way. Public higher education should be paid for directly from the gross domestic product of the country. Now the formula for this would be a 1.3% derivation from the GDP and totally. That would be and that would, to give fund us 63, that would give us 63.7 billion rands to fund P, uh, free public higher education. Now, the amount we need to fund higher education in South Africa amounts to 50 billion. This means that we are left with 13.7 billion rands. And in this who would be funding free education? Would it be the state? You haven't introduced who would be funding Now, ma'am, when we speak about the GDP contributing from. directly to free education, this means that the state, corporate, and each and Thank you, Leader Five, for Leader Two. African. I strongly believe that free education should be funded through the unified efforts of different sectors within South Africa. Multinational corporation taxations, private sector should also prioritize their corporate social investments on funding free education. We should also prioritize on learnerships and bursaries to ensure that graduates are employable. Um, universities and colleges should charge alumni taxations for alumni that are employable. E Thank you so much, leaders. A round of applause for Leader 5 and leader two all right judges this is the moment where you get to vote who actually took that round is it natasha leader number two or leader number five sydney we'll give you a few seconds to make your vote and remember that our audience members will also have an opportunity to cast their vote to the top three that make it of course to that round all righty then I understand that you are done with your judging let's take a look at which leader took that round And there you have it, South Africa, of course, the leader that took that debate round is leader number five, Sydney. A round of applause. Congratulations, Sydney. All right, Mzansi, well, our final debate for this week is between leader number four, Nandile Mlambo, and leader number three, Tami Poe. Nandile, please give us your vision statement. Begin now. Nothing is for free in this world, number one. Number two, everything for free is subject to abuse. That being said, I'm incredibly sensitive to the fact that, yes, education is a basic human right. And I strongly believe that South Africa can create solutions where education is far more affordable and in some cases free. Alrighty then, Tommy, you may get into debate. So, like, you find instances where many students, like at Vitz University, for mm. example, 4,777 students were financially excluded in that particular year. Mm. Are you saying that those students must continually be excluded just because they are poor? Leader, I do not believe in them being um, continually excluded. I believe that, Leader, um, we can perhaps create solutions where, according to either your guardian or your parents' income bracket, maybe then fees can be... Um, then um, okay, so paid according to what your pa parents can afford. So how do you then fund such a model, right? Because you need an extra uh, allocation of money to actually get those proportions right. I think the funding is quite a problem at the moment because, I mean, if you look at the economic climate in South Africa right now, it's depressed. I mean, the, ec the global economic growth rate has remained sluggish from 3.3% So are you saying that we keep the status quo and students must pay for education they can't afford? I think, um, honestly, uh, we, we need to go the route where parents see how much they can actually afford because students that, for example, can't... All right, you may now give us a closing statement, Leader Four. Um, okay, so I think either own contribution for people who can afford, no fee increments, you can pay affordable rate according to your parents' income brackets. Three, students who are achieving good results and uh, performing very well must be given recognitions. Perhaps they could also, you know, uh, pay free. And four, they are, they are big, there's a big skill, I'm sorry, a skill shortage in the artisan field. Um, you get academic and both practical experience. These are government CETA learnerships. Thank you so much, leader number four. Leader three. Your 30 seconds to state your vision statement begins now. 
in order to address the inequalities that plague our community today, what I propose is free education for the poor particularly. I say that you take the NASFA structure as is and you convert NASFA from being a loan to being a grant. You need 37 billion rands to fund this. And what you do is you take a corporate tax of 5.8% in addition annually and you'll get 37.62 billion rands. This way, you'll get students that, can act, that, that can't afford education. Debate leader for? Leader, can all, all students Students go to traditional universities. That's just my issue here. That's why I was suggesting, Good. you know, government ceases, etc. Because that is actually free. Sure. That is actually free. My model, like my model, already covers all of those things, yeah. right? My mother, my model covers not only um, um, traditional universities, not only uh, but diplomas, etc. The TV et cetera, colleges, right? the the learnership. Yes, internships. absolutely. Because free education needs to be extended to that realm and that level. As well. I, I, it's actually free. As artisan fair. field. I mean, I, th I think we just must go broad, as you sure. say. NASFAS model. You know, things can't be looked at. What can be chopped and those seats that you're talking to income about. Are already free. Absolutely. So they're already outside of the ambit of this particular debate. So people can actually access those seekers for free an and option. get those skills. Yes. Yeah, but Absolutely. And I, the reason why I'm raising it because I think a lot of people aren't aware of, of what's going on with the government seats, the learnerships and the internships, what skills they can but what gain I want and to how they can to even that be a part of the That's outside the ambit of the debate, right? Because they're already free and it's already skill set right there, right? What are we talking about within this debate, within the realm of this debate, yes. is actual educational institutions more than CETA allocated. Rap leader three. Right. So in order to address social inequalities that plague our community today, what we need is an education system that has a means towards free education. The reality is we can't afford free education, we can't afford 96 billion right now, but we can step towards it with the 37 billion that we can get from corporate tax. Alrighty then, a round of applause to Leader 3 and Leader 4. Thank you so much leaders. Well judges, you've heard the compelling debate. This is your time now to cast your vote. Is it Leader 3, Tommy Boe or Leader 4, Nandi Lamlambo, they take that round. Alrighty, thank you so much for voting. Now we're going to take a look at what the judges feel is actually the best debate. Let's take a look. Alrighty then, well there you have South Africa and of course the leader that takes that round is Tommy Boe, leader number three. A round of applause. All right, Seven Zile, I'd like to know from you which leader did you vote for and why? Um, in all three or just the, the, the last one? In just the last uh, debate between leader three and four. I particularly actually went, uh, went for leader four in that particular regard because my issue with Tommy's argument is that the private sector is going to say, you want to tax us 5% more. How are you going to get that? Already you tax us um, in, in, in just regular tax at that. What the, 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 the highlight, I think, of, of what Leader 4 was, was actually highlighting is that we have to have an integrated approach to education in the country. Not enough people are accessing already existing institutions that are far cheaper and in fact that that get them into the market much faster than what be it a bachelor's degree would do or any other degree at a degree would actually allow you to get into the market at the end of the day how do you get the big corporates to pay a lot more tax when they are already being taxed uh, billions of rands annually and, and diane did you vote for tommy i voted for tommy right i didn't vote on the basis of whether i agreed with the argument or not I voted on the basis of whether or not Tommy was pre presenting the argument well. Um, I do personally believe that uh, we need to have a cost-sharing model, and that um, individuals need to be um, need to be charged on income contingent loans. I think that would be workable. However, I do think that um, Leader Four didn't put across her argument well enough in order to really hold that. She um, dislodged her argument by starting to look at other aspects of the system that were not really focused on higher education, which while um, I understand where that came from, dislodged her argument. Whereas Tommy was very direct, right. he put together his argument, he argued strongly and he was fairly logical in it. However, I agree with my fellow judge here mm. that it wouldn't be workable to do that All right. and anyhow the 37 billion would not be sufficient to support enough students. Thank you so much Dr. Parker. Well thank you so much to our judges for voting and thanks to our contestants for giving us such a compelling debate right here on One Day Leader. We'll be right back.
Well, you're watching One Day Leader and we're coming to you from the SABC's Henley Studios right here in Johannesburg. And earlier on, we looked at whether or not it's possible for government to provide free quality education in high learning institutions. And our audience members, of course, will choose who has won this episode. So audience members, I understand you have your voting pads and you'll have a selection between leader number three, leader five and leader six as your favorite for this episode. You may start your voting now. Alrighty then, as they select their favorite leader, don't forget that you at home can vote for your favorite leader between leader one all the way up to leader six by SMSing their number to double three one two one. And trust me, that could help your favorite leader to make it to the top spot. All right, I can see that you're actually very confident in your answers. You are ready and you're done. Thank you so much, audience members. Let's take a look at which leader was a firm favorite, according to our audience members. And according to our audience, leader number six takes this episode. According to our audience members, congratulations to you, Ludwig Azi. Congratulations. But of course, remember, you at home have the power to continue voting for your favorite leader right here on One Day Leader. All you have to do is SMS their leader number to the number 33121. Thank you so much, audience members. Thank you so much for voting. And now, let's have a look at our overall final scoreboard. Zarif is on two points. Natasha is on four points. Tami on two points. Nandile has no point. Sydney on five points and Ludwig Azi is leading with six points. Well, congratulations to today's winner. Please join us again next week when we discuss the issue of service delivery. Thank you to our contestants, our judges, our studio audience, but most importantly to you at home for participating and watching the show. I will leave you with the wise words of Aristotle who once said that the educated differ from the uneducated as much as the living differ from the dead. So leaders, keep your focus on education and that of course will make a difference in your life. From myself, Tumalomo Totwani and the rest of the One Day Leader team, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.